In this video, we're going to talk about how heat can travel through the environment or between substances. What is heat exchange? Heat is a type of energy exchange between objects of two different temperatures. Heat is always transferred from a hotter object to a colder one. And this is until the temperatures of the two objects are equal. Hence, heat is a type of energy that manifests itself as the transfer of energy between objects or even parts of an object, due to the difference in temperature. Such energy transfer can cause a change in the state of an object, for example, by changing its state. In the picture we can see two objects, one warmer and one colder. Heat is then the energy that moves from a hotter object to a cooler one, which we have represented by an arrow from a hotter object to a colder one. Heat can be created in a variety of ways, such as burning fuel, sunlight, friction, or passing an electric current through a conductor. In this way, a certain amount of energy is generated or entered into the object, which is then transferred to the cooler objects around it. Heat is a type of energy and is therefore a physical quantity. Heat is indicated by the capital letter Q. As with other types of energy, the basic unit is again the joule. How heat can spread. Heat transfer is a process in which the temperature of a substance changes its value due to the transfer of heat from one substance to another. There are three basic types of heat transfer, namely conduction, convection, and radiation. The first method is heat conduction. It is the transfer of heat from a hotter object to a colder one in all types of states. Conduction is caused by the movement of particles inside the substance, which collide with each other and transfer energy. In substances with higher temperatures, particles move faster, so they have more energy. These particles then collide with neighboring particles with lower energy that move more slowly. By impact, they transfer some of the energy to a slower particle. Through this energy transfer, the energy in the substances is gradually equalized, and so is the temperature. Materials with high thermal conductivity, such as metals, transmit heat well, while insulators such as wood or polystyrene are poor conductors of heat. An example of heat conduction would be a pot on the stove. When you place the pot on the hot plate, the temperature is transferred from the stove to the pot. The particles from the hot plate transfer energy to their neighbors in the pot, causing the temperature of the pot to gradually rise, which in turn gradually heats the contents of the pot. With this, we have described what heat conduction is. The second way is to spread heat through convection. Heat conduction was the transfer of heat in solids. Convection is a mode of heat transfer in liquids and gases. Liquids and gases, unlike solids, do not have a fixed location of particles, and hence their particles can move freely in the fluid. For this reason, the heated part of the liquid is gradually mixed with the cold part, which gradually equalizes the temperature of the liquid. In this way, for example, the air in the home is heated by means of radiators, from which warm air flows gradually throughout the home. Similarly, water is heated in an electric kettle, where the water is heated from below. The hot water then rises and is replaced by cold water, which is heated up again. When hot water or steam flows through the radiator, the heat is transferred to the surrounding air flowing around the radiator. The hot air then spills over, i.e. flows around the room, which leads to heat transfer by convection. Another example would be the transfer of hot water in pipes or the heat transferred through the air from radiators. With that, we have talked about what heat transfer is through convection. The last third way we will mention today is heat radiation. Heat radiation is the transfer of heat using electromagnetic radiation. This heat transfer does not require a heat transfer environment and so can also take place in a vacuum. Solar radiation, which gives us heat from the sun, is an example of heat radiation. Another example would be microwave ovens, which use electromagnetic waves to heat food. The energy transmitted by the electromagnetic waves is then absorbed by the water molecules in the food causing them to vibrate and thus increase the temperature of the food. The amount of energy that a substance absorbs by radiation even depends on the color of the fabric. When the radiation hits the object, some of the radiation is reflected, some of it passes through the object, and some of it is absorbed. The energy that heats the object is only the energy that will be absorbed. Objects that have a black, dark, matte and rough surface radiate well and also absorb thermal radiation. 
This means that they heat up very quickly by absorbing radiation, but at the same time they lose this temperature quickly. Objects that have a light, silvery, shiny, and smooth surface do not radiate well and also absorb thermal radiation. An example would be clothes in the summer. If we wear a black t-shirt on a sunny day, then we will be warmer than if we put on a white t-shirt. With that, we have said individual heat transfers. Now let's take a look at the individual examples in the picture of the cauldron that we have prepared here. When burning, energy is generated that heats the bottom of the pot, especially radiation. The pot then transfers heat to the water, which convects it over the entire volume of the liquid, thus heating the rest of the cast iron of the pot. The heat that is generated by the heated pot is then transferred by conduction to the handle, which is hot. What is good for knowing something about heat conduction? If we have a household, then we probably heat it during the winter. For this reason, we need to have well-placed radiators so that the heat in the house or apartment is maintained approximately the same and does not draft anywhere. For this reason, for example, radiators are placed exclusively under windows, where the most heat escapes through the windows. In addition, radiators under the window prevent condensation from forming on the glass. Minimizing heat loss is also important for maintaining heat in households. Therefore, windows should not be left open for too long in winter. When it is necessary to change the air for fresh air, it is advisable to open the window wide for a while and then close it. To ensure that even a closed window does not lose an unnecessary amount of heat, then it is advisable to buy a better quality window that is made up of two or three panes of glass that prevent greater loss of heat from the home. In addition to windows, heat is also lost through the walls of houses and roofs. In order to minimize this loss, the houses are then wrapped with insulation, most often with polystyrene. The roof is insulated with either insulating foam or insulation wall. If the household is not sufficiently insulated in winter, then the cost of heat can be several times higher than it would have to be if the household was properly insulated. In addition, with high heat losses, heat is most often supplied by burning more wood and coal, which is not entirely ecological. In addition to heat loss in the home, we will learn about the principle of a device that stores heat, which is a thermos. A thermos flask is a device designed to maintain the temperature of the contents of a container, such as hot tea. Its principle of operation is to minimize heat loss and maintain the temperature of the contents for as long as possible. The basic parts of a thermos are the inner container, the sealing cap and the outer packaging. Each serves to minimize different kinds of heat transfer. In the thermos there is an inner container in which hot or cold contents are placed. This vessel is usually made of materials with high thermal insulation, such as double-walled glass or steel containers with a vacuum in between. The vacuum space eliminates heat conduction, as the conduction takes place when two surfaces come into contact. The thermos also has a sealing cap that closes the container. This minimizes heat loss through the airspace between the cap and the vessel by means of convection. This means that the hot air in the container is not exchanged with the cold air outside the container. Furthermore, a thermos has an outer shell that is usually made of materials that are glossy to minimize heat loss through radiation. Thanks to this composition, the thermos can maintain the temperature of the contents for a longer period of time, regardless of the outside temperature. Thermoses are often used to keep drinks warm, but on hot summer days they can also be used the other way around, to keep drinks cold. In conclusion, we will summarize the information that there are three basic heat transfers, conduction, convection, and radiation. That it is important to try to lose as much heat as possible in the home, for example by closing the windows, or by using suitable windows and insulation to minimize heat loss. Finally, Understand the principle of a thermos that tries to minimize heat loss by trying to reduce heat transfer using all three types of heat transfer that we mentioned in this video. That's it for this video. If you liked the video, don't forget to like or subscribe.